I believe that we will win because we have such awesome House delegates running in 2021. And it's so important this election because all eyes will be on Virginia. And we all already see the nonsense going on around at the school board level that the opposition is getting activated in ways that we have to really understand how we will run the map, what our messaging will be, how we will make sure we will win. Because we do believe we'll win, but that means we have to be all in. So we're glad you're all in today. Um, it is Friday, thank goodness. It's beautiful outside. The weather has been fantastic in Virginia, hot across the whole United States. And sometimes I'm like, okay, we really have to win because climate, social justice, women's rights are under attack. And we're glad that Planned Parenthood is working with us and Green New Deal and the Justice Warriors and all of our partners for this particular Women's Summit because these issues are so important. So we wanna make sure that we get the message across. So we have also done the Power Lunch to make sure that we are building this wonderful community. So glad you're in the room. And if you're a patron, Thank you very much. And if you back the show, even bigger thanks, because what we're doing is really building that fire in the belly to make sure we stay in the fight. And you are so important, everything you're doing. So thank you for being here. All right. So we are going to talk today. We have a great lineup. We have some candidates here, which is always exciting. We have some organizations we're going to spotlight. And we want to make sure first, because we are also doing our big event this weekend, that we talk a little bit about the Women's Summit. So we all know some people are just learning about it, maybe your first time in the room. So we are grassroots women that have done this Women's Summit for, this is our fifth year. And uh, we pivoted last year for, for the pandemic online. And this year we're back to in-person and virtual. We're doing hybrid uh, events. So why not? We're ready to be in person. Most of us are vaccinated, so good for us. Um, so before I forget though, uh, put in the chat, if you haven't already ladies, uh, subscribe to our YouTube, share our content, follow us on our Twitter, and talk to us on Twitter so we can build up our messaging all across that Twitter universe. And also the rules of the road, we usually close the room at 1215 um, and stick around for the after chat. And that's just for security reasons. All right. So I'd like to bring up our first, first uh, guest on the show from Wynn, Virginia, Heidi Drasnick. Drashak, is that how you say your last name? I didn't practice. Yep. Okay. Yeah, good. Well, Heidi, you have been working for Win Virginia for a couple of years now. Um, and I would we're so grateful you're here today because we want to know what you're doing um uh, to in this this fight ahead for this election. So introduce yourself and tell the people a little bit about your organization and then what your plans are for this upcoming election and what's your goals to make sure that we keep Virginia blue. Wonderful. Thank you, Catherine and Robin and Stair, and thank you for having us today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Heidi Drawshack. I work with the Win Virginia Board. Drawshack. It, it sounds simpler than it looks. <laughs> um, and I'm going to give a little bit of background on Win Virginia, what we do, how we came about, um, and then I'm going to pass it over to Nancy Rice, who's one of the board members, and she's going to talk a little bit about our plan for this year. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar, Win Virginia is a board of individuals that was formed in 2017 to create a Democratic uh, majority here in Virginia. Um, it focused on several things that I think were unique at the time and are still part very uh, strong parts of the mission. Uh, the first is running everywhere, so making sure that Republicans have to fight in every district, even in the places where they traditionally wouldn't have to face an opponent. Um, part of it was focusing on new strategies and technologies, and so making sure that campaigns were focusing on leading edge technologies and new ways of campaigning and really bringing their campaigns into the 21st century. And the final tenant, which I think is especially important now is running together. And that's making sure that candidates run up and down the ticket and recognize that at the end of the day, we are running as a state and as a commonwealth and as a party, not as individual candidates. Um, so those were the three central tenants at the forming of Win Virginia. Um, Win Virginia itself offers four or has historically offered four things. Um, that's recruiting uh, candidates, 
offering training to candidates, offering tools, so things like subscriptions and technology services, and then direct funding. Um, that changes our strategy changes every year as the needs for candidates and as the party as a whole shifts um, but those are typically the four things that are offered um, of course we are facing a totally different field this year than we are in 2017 um, instead of being on the offense and really trying to claim the majority we are now defending a majority um, but nonetheless, when Virginia is still not only interested in defending the majority, but also supporting those long shot candidates that otherwise may not have the support or, you know, as much support as some of the larger candidates. Um, we do look for candidates with written, written campaign plans. Um, those, again, like I said, that have a focus on campaigning with others. So up and down the ticket, we really love to see candidates that, uh, again, recognize that it's a team effort, not an individual effort. And then again, are pursuing new technology and strategies and really demonstrate a 21st century campaign. Um, so with that, I'll hand it over to Nancy. Uh, yeah. I will also I just, yeah, so that's wonderful. So, so the candidates, do you know which candidates you're supporting now or which, Heidi, do you, I think do you have a list? Question. Oh, is that your question, Nance? Okay, good. Well, this is the conversation. So I'm just conversation. So yeah, Nance. We've sent out our first uh, set of funding but we do just tons of analysis and what some of the things we look for are for the candidate i mean we look at we look at their websites to see how how effective they are um we look at the statistics for their district um historically and as much as we can tell currently because we don't exactly have a crystal ball um so we've sent out our first, how many, Heidi, have we uh, sent out to? Uh, so we've already supported 11 candidates. Uh, one thing about Win Virginia is we do not get involved before the primary. Right. Um, so that is part of the reason why we're just kind of gearing up now. Um, but yes, we've already supported 11 candidates. We're now hoping to do our second allocation in the coming weeks. Um, and we'll continue to do so, of course, until November. We're looking primarily, well, we're looking at two things. We're looking at um, defense of, of seats. And that's partly why we have waited until after the primaries because we didn't know where we, we were going to stand. Um, we're trying to maintain and improve our majority in the house. That's our primary strategy. And it has been since 17. Um, we are, you know, we look at what the party is doing. We look at, as I said, a lot of statistics and try to figure out a, which who's going to need the most defending and then B what Republican, uh, incumbents might be more vulnerable than they think. Mm -hmm. And that's the second sort of part of our strategy is to try to support people who are challenging in areas that have been traditionally Republican. Not everybody thinks those are a great bet. And um, I know to use right. the term betting is, <laughs> <laughs> well, know, but it's, it's, you know, you put your money where your mouth is basically. <laughs> yeah, well, I like to back up Nancy because what I love about when Virginia, um, we got, you know, we. We got into action the same time, and that's when I met Sashi Gupta. Mm -hmm. At he he presented at Virginia Democracy Forward, and they're in the room today. As a lot of the other grassroots groups will be here today, mm -hmm. we're so excited to have them. And and so it was the same idea. We uh, and that's where we had this alignment that was great. That we wanted to support all the candidates, and we supported seventeen, and we really were able to make such great movement in that first year. And so, when Virginia has been a great partner. And the board, you're on the board now. I just want to say, Nancy Rice, welcome on the board of Win Virginia. And we um, are so so glad to see you in the room. You've been a big fan and at, at a lot of the shows, as we say, enjoyed the content. So moving forward then, um, you got this pl plan in place. Is it Does it include, when you take that information with the candidate in the sense of like, 
getting out the vote or trying to give that information? How does that all work on the second phase of it? When you work with the candidate, what are those next step looks like? Like you identify them, you want to help them. And then do you work with their team or how do you do? Explain to everybody how you work with the candidate. Some of it depends on what they need. Yeah. Um, It's a little bit of a balancing act because a lot of it depends on what the the state party and the caucus are doing, because right. we work pretty hard not to duplicate people's efforts to build on what other people are building on. Um, that being said, we sometimes do go our own road if we see a need that we don't think is being sufficiently met or met really at all. Um, we've offered bounties on on people running in places where we couldn't where candidates did not appear you know to get them started so they're not like out in the wilderness by themselves um we do a lot of talking to candidates they call us we you know there's a, a level of advice and advising and experience that um a right. lot of our candidates so, so the, yeah, with the training, are you doing, are you guys planning some upcoming training you want to? Uh, we are not doing a training this year. However, we are helping to fund the training that um, DPVA is. We, we felt like um, duplication again. You know, there was a period of time where we felt that that need was not being sufficiently met. So we met it. Um, but there have been changes and catch-ups and, and uh, you know, uh, as the wheel of time rolls forward, things change and you have to always be ready to reevaluate where you are right now and not get stuck in where you were last year or two years ago. True. And I mean, that's I one of our advantages because we are small and um, DPVA right. has a party plan and, and um, a lot of people that they have to essentially answer to, we have fewer of those. We would like to have more, by the way. Yeah, but, exactly. <laughs> but at this time. Um, yes, I agree. Because I think, I think in Virginia, one thing I liked about it is, like you said, you pivoted. You recognize, like we were frustrated with people like, let's say, Fennell Norton, when we met her, she, we, she joined our community, was able to get support through the Power Lunch and connect her to different people. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's hard for these, these candidates to raise the money to get access to the van. There's all these kind of barriers right. the party can put in front of the candidates. And we're trying to really push that part of it away and figure out how can we make sure if we want to contest in every seat, we have to build a structure that helps candidates, not, not makes barriers. So I love the, what you did back in the day when you were recruiting for those seats and supporting it. So maybe we're changing the culture. Do you think so? We are changing the culture, but it's cultural change is very slow. As you can see from right. Black Lives Matter and um, you know the, the issues that we have with the police are all cultures, all of them change very slowly. Yes. And you just have to keep with it. You have to keep fighting the battle. You know, when people say to me, I'm a progressive, I say, you know, what do you mean? And they define it. I say, I've been doing that for 50 years. <laughs> yes, you, you, yes, you are a long, a long term world you warrior. Have stick with it. You have to stick in there all the time. Yes. Particularly I, I, in a state like Virginia, where you have elections every year. So I think, yeah, I think you're totally right. Because I know consistency and organizing is this really key. And that's what we've been trying to do this whole year, these five years to stay consistent, not walk away and keep people engaged. And that's where the Women's Summit kind of comes around. And now the Friday Power Lunch to build this community. Yeah. But I want to, I want, if you have any a, a last takeaway, Nan, Nancy, and then we're gonna- Not particularly, get out there and vote, register yeah. neighbors, call people. Yeah. All of those things are still like, you know, canvassing is still the most important thing that gets done. Yes, no doubt. All right. Well, you know, we'll be in Virginia Beach in August. We hope when Virginia will will join us there. We have we're going to organize the biggest canvas at the beach ever. I'm going ever biggie uh, <laughs> swing left sister district Planned Parenthood. And we're going to hit the beach in August 13th, 14th, 15th weekend. And and because it's going to be the place to really get down there and knock doors. And we who doesn't love a beach? It's been right. identified as a really pivotal uh, area. Yes. It's, it's several connected races. Yeah. 
yeah, I've been down there knocking doors quite a bit in my past. And so, you know, but the beach, it's a great destination. So we hope people join us. So thank you, Nancy Rice. Thank you for winning Virginia. Heidi, for everything you do. And I'm going to bring up Louisa Borowski, who is our news anchor. If you know- Great that, to be here. Hi. And I want to tell people that we really skipped around today. So my team is Lu Louisa, news anchor, news anchor. And then we have, of course, Dara from Net Network Nova, big boss. Oh, she is the ambassador of Buzz. And of course, we have Robin Zeff Warner, Postcards for Virginia, is in the room. And then Rose Marie, who is uh, now a part of the team. And we, uh, she is helping us stay steady. So thank you, Rose Marie. And then we also have Anika, our intern, but she is at a Girl State event. So good for her. So take it away, Louisa, because introduce our grassroots groups, because these people are the ones making a difference in Virginia. We're so delighted our friends can join us. So absolutely. So I am so excited to share a little bit more with you. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone. Oh, sorry, I did it. That's me, Louisa. Unmute yourself. You keep doing it. Well, you know why I did? I was muting myself. And then then the, 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 the screen shifted and I muted you twice. I was trying to shut my screen, my, me off. I'm sorry, my friend. No worries. So it's great to be here with everyone and to share a little bit more about the Virginia Grassroots Coalition. So the coalition started in April, 2017. I'm going to share my screen so you can see how many members we have today. And this is just some of them, right? And the purpose of this coalition was to take all of these grassroots groups that popped up because Trump was elected, because people felt like they needed to get involved in democracy to make sure democracy was working for us citizens of Virginia. And so it was so important to have time for these new groups to come together because one, they were new and we needed to learn together and we needed to figure out where could we have the greatest impact. And what we found was by collaborating together on campaigns and to supporting our democratic candidates, that's how we could multiply our impact. And that's what we've been doing since 2017. We work very strategically. We make sure that we distribute the energy of our groups across the different campaigns this year, we're working on quite a number of them. As you can see here, some of them are hold seats where we really want to make sure our candidates stay in those seats in the House of Delegates, and some are flip seats. And we always want to expand that map. And so flips are always one of our um, areas of strategic focus. The other thing that we have found is that by coming together as a coalition of groups, we are starting to get seats at the table. This means that we aren't just working from outside of the Democratic Party. We also have a seat at the partners table and we sit there and we ask the difficult questions about what is the strategy we're, we're using in the elections this year? How are we defining our universe? How are we making sure we're targeting the right voters at the right time to make sure we're gonna get as many votes as possible um, as soon as early voting starts in September. So these are the kinds of things that we do as part of the coalition. The last thing I want to note is since 2019, the coalition has also pivoted to include work at the legislative level. And this has been very important because once we get our Democrats into seats of power, we want them to vote on the issues that matter to us. And we have a great opportunity to do that. Coming up at the beginning of August, we're going to have a special session on the budget. And this is, there's a lot of money that's going to be coming into Virginia and big decisions need to be made about where the, that monetary investment should go and will be part of that process as well. So first, I want to encourage you, please join us. But to give you a sense of who some of our groups are that either you can join as an individual or if you're the leader of a group and you're not part of the coalition yet, we encourage you to join as a group member. So I'm going to first turn it over to Kathleen Murray from We of Action to tell us a little bit about her group. Kathleen. Do we have Kathleen? Is She's in the room, I think. Stare, we got her. She came in. 
Kathleen is probably busy doing some advocacy, but I'm sure she's here. Kathleen, um, she stay here. Kathleen needs her video, her uh, audio on. There we go. Big Boss is on it. No one puts baby in the corner, right, Kathleen? Apologies, you're on. All right, yay. <laughs> Thank you, Stare, for unmuting me. <laughs> <laughs> so at any rate, yeah. So uh, We Have Action, it's basically a, a Arlington-based, um, we are an indivisible group, and we were founded you know, shortly after the election by a local school teacher. Our membership, um, you know, between our website and Facebook, et cetera, um, I, you know, I say 1500, it's probably really a thousand of local people. There's other people that are just sort of looking in. Um, we, you know, we participate in the local, state, and national elections. And, um, you know, we work closely with uh, the Virginia Grassroots Coalition. You know, we're very, uh, we never want to, um, reinvent the wheel. That's one of our hard and fast rules in our group and with other. And so we were lucky, we, you know, we have a number of local, other local groups like, you know, uh, VADF and, you know, Arlington Blue Families and we'll partner with them, you know, and, we, you know, we put, we leave our pride at the door and say, hey, you take the lead on this, we'll follow and support. Um, and so it really works. Um, and we've, you know, adopted numerous candidates over the years, you know, and, you know, Josh Cole, Wendy, Gaditis, Dave Reed, Sheila, Biden, Colm, and the list goes on. This year, right now, we have one adopted candidate, and that is Josh Cole, because uh, we, we chose him, you know, historically, we have been supporting him for a while. And we will, the good thing about our group is we're kind of fluid. We, we, we you know, we have a structure, we have an XCOM, etc. But we are able to sort of turn on a dime. So let's say somebody's doing really well of our adopt, we can bring on another one or support other groups with their adoptees. Um, and we're always happy to do it. And if you're interested in more information, all this information is down at the bottom of the slide. Uh, we're on Twitter, our website. Uh, we, we have a weekly newsletter that puts out other group stuff as well as ours. Um, oh, and Thank you, yeah. Kathleen. And can you put ways to get in touch with you in the chat as well, if possible? Absolutely. Great. I'm on it. Thank you. Yeah. And so I'm going to turn over to our next group, uh, Chris, who is with Virginia Democracy Forward. Chris, can you thanks tell so us a much. Thank you, Louisa. Uh, and thanks so much for all of the uh, Power Lunch fans who are on this call uh, and all the candidates and the organizers. This is awesome. My group is called Virginia Democracy Forward, uh, VADF for short. We are based in McLean, Northern Virginia. We have about 400 members ranging all the way from the super crazy active uh, mm -hmm. all the way to the not active at all. Uh, but we uh, call ourselves Neighbors Taking Action, uh, and our mission is uh, electing Democrats in Virginia and beyond. Uh, now, let me tell you, uh, this year is, is going to be very important to stay active. Yes, Trump is no longer on the ballot, but the Trumpers still are. And that's especially true in Virginia. So our group has decided to uh, very much along the playbook strategy that Louisa talked about adopting a candidate. We've adopted those four awesome candidates uh, that are on the slide. Um, and uh, just like Kathleen was saying, this is fluid. So we'll uh, revise and, 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 and uh, you know, reevaluate as the year goes on. And we may add uh, other candidates uh, to this list. Uh, right now, we've decided to add to, to have two candidates or two who are already delegates, and that's Josh Cole and Wendy Goodaitis. And then two who are running for the very first time, and that's Brianna Sewell on the left and uh, Deborah Gardner on the right here, who is in the Richmond area. And so the strategy we're going to be uh, uh, doing is that during the summer month, we're focusing on fundraising because these folks need early money. And um, so we're going to have a big fundraiser event for Josh Cole on July 30th. That's going to be in McLean with our friends from uh, We Have Action Warfare. 
and that's going to be for Josh Cole's birthday. So if you uh, in uh, McLean anytime uh, or at the, on that day, July 30th, you do want to join us because our host is known uh, almost worldwide for being a five-star Michelin chef, and you're going to have the best food in all of any fundraiser in Virginia. So uh, do join us, whether you care about democracy or food. And then we'll have another fundraiser on August 26 for uh, Wendy, and then we'll pivot to the canvassing in the Falls Mount and try to Richmond to uh, canvas for Debra. We need her to win. Thank you so much, Chris. And anything that you want to put in the chat, please do so people can get in touch with you guys. I'm going to invite Heidi from Herndon Reston Indivisible. We don't have a slide for her, but we'd love to have her share what Herndon Reston Indivisible is, has been up to and their priorities for the year. Heidi. Oh, hi, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great day. I think I need one of those. Some audio issue. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to mute her. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi. We're going to move on since Heidi is having some trouble with it. For to resist the Democrats being off as past like indivisible. Or it's, uh, or, or. All right. Yeah. So we're going to move on to our last group that we're highlighting today, Nope Neighbors. And one thing I want to note is this coalition is not just Northern Virginia. We have groups from across Virginia as well as from DC and Maryland. It's really a DMV coalition. And a lot of our Maryland and DC friends come and help us with our Virginia elections. And then we try to help them when we can on issues that are important to them. So Jackie, um, please tell us about uh, the priorities for NOPE this year. Thanks, Louisa. Um, so this year I've been working a lot with NOPE, Neighbors Defending Democracy. In past years, I've worked with VADF. Um, this year I've been turning more of my uh, sites to DC. So NOPE has approximately 1,600 people, uh, 1,600 members. Most of our members are in Northwest DC, but we also have members from Maryland. Um, and for 2021, our strategy, um, we've identified six states with crucial Senate races in 2022. And within each of those states, we've identified and vetted a proven community organizing group. Um, and we're encouraging our donors to make significant early and recurring donations to these six groups to help build the base for next year's Senate races. Um, I'm not sure how much we've raised so far, but in 2020, we raised uh, 1.13 million. So uh, hopefully, I, I don't think we're gonna get quite to that, but I think we're gonna have some good fundraising uh, for those organizations. And in addition, we'll be working to hold Virginia Democratic seats through canvassing and fundraising. Um, my focus with NOPE, uh, along with Joanna Pratt, has been DC statehood. Um, and I heard uh, before, I think uh, somebody was talking about consistency and sticking, sticking in there and you know, being in there for the long haul. And uh, that is DC statehood. Uh, some of the advocates have been working on it for decades. So I'm a baby in this fight. Um, I just quickly wanna talk about how um, the statehood bills in Congress, they are gonna form a new federal district. It's a much smaller federal district, um, but this federal district will be maintained contrary to what you're hearing from a lot of Republicans. We're not getting rid of the district, we're just shrinking it, which has been done before. Um, I will put an explainer video in the chat. Great. Um, and uh, I'll just say that statehood is gonna be important to Virginia in the same way that the Democratic Virginia legislature is important to DC. You know, we, we're all working toward the same uh, goals. And uh, so it's important for us to support each other. I'll put everything in the chat. That is fantastic. Thanks so much, Jackie. 
And it looks like Joanne from Herndon Resident Indivisible is with us and she's going to just, hey Joanne, just give us uh, 30 seconds on what are the priorities of HRI this year? Okay, so, um, you know, as usual, um, we, pre primary, we have people work on whatever um, suits them, work for candidates that sort of resonate with them. Then, post primary, we start our planning. We have first our first election meeting on July 8th. We've already adopted. So our, our philosophy is we um, work with inside our area, which is Herndon and Reston, which encompasses the Drainsville and Hunter Mill districts that produce the most vote in the state. Um, so we are cognizant of that. And we also work outside of our borders during the summer. So we've adopted Wendy Goditis. We'll be working on Brianna Sewell. Sewell. Um, we'll also be working on Candy Clark and other people who are adjacent to our area. And then in the fall, we'll connect with the coordinated campaign. And then the delegates who are running in our area benefit from what we do. So we do canvassing, phone banking, voter engagement um, outside and inside our area. Um, after the meeting on um, July 8th, we'll determine who else we are going to work on like outside of our area within the rest of Virginia. And of course, we will um, are cognizant of the fact of all the um, the Women's Summit, the Grassroots Coalition, what activities they're going to be doing. We partner with Sister District um, on some of our activities also. That's um, we also work at the federal level on uh, different legislation, making sure that gets passed. We've been in DC the past two weeks. And we also work on local issues uh, that affect the Board of Supervisors or the school board. So um, if you're in our area, please uh, connect with us and join us and for what we uh, usually do uh, to get Democrats elected here in November, which the top of the ticket, again, is extremely important to us. And that's why in the fall, we will spend time in our area um, to make sure that we produce the vote that we need to get out to win that uh, top of the ticket this year. That's great. So I just wanna reiterate how important it is to be doing this work, just as Joanne said. And what we found is that it's a lot easier when you do it with others, right? It's a lot easier when you get to make create these relationships with people who live in your neighborhood or maybe don't live in your neighborhood like Jackie, but are still people who care about the topics that you're really interested in. So if you're not already part of a group, these are some great groups that you could consider joining. If you are a group and you're not part of the coalition, we would love for you to join the coalition. I'm going to put our next meeting again in the chat. It's going to be on Sunday, July 11th. And we'll have conversations both about our strategy for the 2021 elections, as well as what are we going to do about the upcoming um, legislative special session on the budget in August. So we'd love to um, stay in touch with everyone. And I'm going to turn it back over to Catherine because I know we have some amazing candidates to hear from, many of whom we are supporting too. So Catherine, over to you. Oh. Yeah. Always ready to spring to action with the tactics it takes to do what needs to be done. That's what it needs to run for office. Because women and winning is the only option. Women are creating a concoction for success, giving the middle finger to those who try to trump them and create an uprest through the new cycling, Julie Brisman bicycling, to swift action, says she wasn't gonna be silenced. They tried to take her down, giving the worst news on Halloween, no joke. Yes, she took her anger and frustrations and channeled it into hope. Now, she's loud in supervisor, so why even try her? She took her experiences, love of the people, at seeing 45 as a toxin, to now bring in the alarm and being one of the many running the charge that winning is the only option. See, badass women are not emotional. No, we mad, and those are not tears. Those are the moist droplets to send out hundreds and thousands of postcards through volunteers because we refuse to do another four years because we know it's at stake. The ERA, a governor that sees blackface as a talking point, 
the disparities of the North and South and East and West Virginia. We need a strong, resilient community to go to the ends of the earth because women, we know what's in you. And we're not talking about sugar and spice and everything nice. No, you have the bronze, the balls, the brains to run campaigns to have less losses and more gains because winning is the only option. And we're the missing voice. It is time to be heard. We need those in power to listen to our unwavering words. And our women leaders said, you are ready to set the trail on fire, to be the phoenix that will rise. Remember Auntie Maxine said, we're reclaiming our time. And our grassroots activists have not been playing fair in the sandbox. And this should make you smile. They have been galvanizing and organizing while those politicians, the kids, have been running wild. And we've had our losses, which is still a win because Virginia was turned blue and it was all because of you. The Barb Joneses, the moms demanding action, the rural roasters who are about getting things done and you can't stop them because they know winning is the only option. So now's the time to catalyze and strategize about the true power access we have much to lose, so we can't settle for less. No more Eliza Doolittle, being the fair lady told who and what and how to act and speak. Women, put on your armor of wit, discernment, and stand to your feet. We only have one choice, and that is it. We have to be the ones who care. We have to be the ones that make it fair. We have to be the ones to rewrite the narrative because we're the ones that waited for permission, so let that be your declarative. We have to be the relentless ones to tell others to vote because we're the ones, women, who thrive up for more than just hope. We are the ones that talk about saying, you can't stop them because we know that winning is the only option. Yes, it is. So that was from was that 2020 and here we are and it's still that same energy i just love that that just gets us pumped up for the next round because we're do doing a segment with four candidates that will be on the ballot finnell norton come on up katie sponsler blakely lockhart and the darius clark we're all excited to have you and hopefully oh there's blakely so for now you're in house district 100 we have katie in house district 66 uh and then we have Blakely in House District 56 and Nadarius Clark in 67. I want to start with Nadarius. Nadarius, my goodness, you gave us what we call hope. Welcome. Tell us how you're feeling. Yes, no, thank you for having me. First off, uh, I'm actually, I just left work. I work at uh, the radio station. So I was coming over from there. Uh, but yes, yeah, still feeling so surreal every morning. It's like I pinch myself and I'm like, you know, I did it. We did it. We achieved so much. And it was because of grassroots and it was because of the efforts we put in. You know, we knocked over 20,000 doors in a primary. We was making thousands of calls. We was out in the neighborhood and we brought it home on election day. And, and not only just that, but we sent a message to, sh to show, you know, that young people can be involved in politics and win elections. And that, uh, you know, someone like me, a young black man, you know, you can run for office and you can make it. And that's, when you lean on the community and you be about the community, the community will show up and support you. Yeah, you did it. I mean, we that was one of my I, tr truly when we heard that you pulled off your primary and um, we were just so excited and it's just like a shining light again, when Louisa had brought up holding our elected accountable. Uh, that's what we need to do. I mean, the person that you beat was not doing, as we say, their job. And um, and also, we really want to see this change when it comes to campaign finance reforms and how we do elections and how we really care for the people. And so your radio show, so is that what you have on your t-shirt? Yeah, I was at the station earlier. I literally just left. Yeah, what was your jam today? What was your jam today? So I have a political talk show on 94.7 The Link every uh, Friday from 10 to 12. I'm up there just talking about world news, national news, state news, everything, culture. We talked about Black Music uh, History Month. Nice. This and everything. Uh, so, is it, so we get a little bit into everything on that talk show. 
No, that's great. It sounds like our little, the thing we're trying to create here, we'll have to like, I'll have to check that out. I, that's, a, that's totally cool. I love it. Yeah, love it. But let, speaking about young people, let's go over to Blakely. Um, so Blakely, how are things going in your campaign? What's, um, uh, tell people of what, how you're feeling and how you're going to, why you believe you're going to win and how you're going to do it. Hi, thank you for having me. Things are going so well. We are incredibly excited to be really bringing change that's needed to the rural areas of Virginia. Um, so while yes, we are a young campaign, we are excited to bring a new vision and new leadership to the Commonwealth. Um, so far, we're just kicking everything off for this summer, um, getting out to knock some doors and getting to meet more people. So. Thank you for having me and I'm super excited for tomorrow. We are we are really excited to meet everybody in person, hopefully. Well, not to uh, to bring up a, a really a sad situation. I, I just wanna offer my condolences for the loss of your friend in that recent gun violence. And I'm wondering in that personal, what happened personally to you, and obviously we, we see this rise in just tremendous again, gun violence. And of course, then the conversation around it and as Fennell always says, messaging is so important around this topic because, you know, this rise in crime now is this pushback against uh, what we've been doing about social justice. And, you know, they're trying to make that connection. Um, in your campaign, how is that, did, what kind of change does that bring to you having that personal uh, loss? Mm -hmm. And then how has it affected you? Has it affected you in any way on your campaign or how you're gonna message or talking about gun violence? Um, it's always sobering, right? It, it all puts us back to where we need to be focused, um, which I have been a big supporter of common, got, you know, common gun sense um, control. And so I got the Moms Demand Action uh, endorsement, which was wonderful. Very thankful for that. I think it's really just, if anything, driven my campaign staff and the people who are supporting um, even harder because we need the reform to happen and we can't keep pushing it off and pushing it off. And this is exactly why we need to elect more women and more Democrats into the house, into our legislature so that we're not pushing it off. We're dealing with it right now. Yeah, no, and you know that the thing we didn't mention at the very beginning, we were talking about, this is historic. We have, I think in Virginia, the most women right now in a candidate spot, like I think it's like over 50 or something. So we are seeing the results of this building the bench and this wave of from activists running people like yourself. And with that, let's go all the way out to the hundred with Fennell Norton. How are you doing? And tell us what is, uh, Kind of lighten your fire today, lady. What's going on? Tell us, every, tell people about your district and who you are. Tell us, everybody knows you though, but. <laughs> so yes, I am Fennell Norton and I am running in District 100. And one of the things that I say is that when I say I'm from here, I'm from here. And that's because I was born and raised in the district, but I also spent 20 years in Ocean View. So I have a really good perspective of both sides and that's unique for us. And then of course, I have a pretty solid business background. I've worked for Bank of America for many years and I ran Virginia, Maryland and DC, about 3,500 employees. Uh, all of the things that you can imagine from strategic direction, uh, operations, uh, customer service, sales, and I ran their contact center too. So I think that gives me a unique perspective in terms of how to bridge the unique rural side of our district versus the urban side of our district. And then the, all the places that I've traveled and gone in between. And so when I think about um, the district and how we're gonna win, I think about um, how I got here. So you can be inspired by fear and you can be inspired by optimism. These Friday calls inspire me with optimism, but what happened over the last four years inspired me with fear. I was just scared. And I just felt like something different had to happen. And if it wasn't gonna be me, then who was it going to be? Mm -hmm. And initially, when I started this journey, I was a little bit, um, I wasn't confident. I thought, oh my God, I don't have the experience. I've got a great business background, but I haven't done politics. And I, I haven't done, sometimes it felt like anything meaningful. But then I kept waiting for the folks who had all the meaningful experience and the folks who had all the stuff that I didn't have, and they weren't there. 
So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when you find that it's your opportunity to show up, you just show up. And I always say, when you know better, you just do better. Right. And so here is how I think we're going to win this district this year. First of all, I'm a from here, and that matters. So you can't talk to me about not understanding uh, the Eastern Shore portion of it. And we probably will never win the Eastern Shore, but we can carve off some votes. And that's what we will do with the right messaging. I won't run a negative campaign, but what I will do is talk about your record and what you've done. And you know, the perfect example happened today. I had a person who just dropped by the gig where I'm working today. And, uh, and believe it or not, she's from Bloxham. Hmm. And so I said, I'm running for delegate. And, and I said, I'm running against Bloxham. And, uh, and she said, oh. And so, uh, so she was like, so she was thinking about it. And I said, but, but who do you usually vote for? And it's probably Bloxham. And I said, but this is the last year you're gonna vote for him. <laughs> and I said, and here's why. I said, you care about voting, right? And you see all the stuff that's happening in Georgia and that bothers you, right? And she goes, yeah. And I said, well, uh, you do know that he votes against things like that. He doesn't vote to make it easy for us to vote. Right, right. And I said, I said you, you care about um, what happens in terms of all of the, the, the chokeholds and how bad that's been for everybody and how we've been talking about that. I said, he, he doesn't vote for that either. She goes, well, I'm going to tell my friends that. And I said, yeah, that's what I want you to do. I want you to tell them. And I gave her my information because the point is, is that at the end of the day, we are all wanting the same things. We care about healthcare and advocacy for it. We care about our pay. We care about all the same things. The point is that we just have to draw the contrast. And then the final thing that I would just say is, aside from all of the coordinated campaigns and all of the things that are happening, this is the most important thing to me right now. You can't see what it. Is it? Yeah, what is it? It's, 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 um, it's a list. And, and what this list is, it is the folks who live in my precinct, the precinct that I vote in. And this list is actually all of the folks who are very strong, solid Democrats who voted in 2020, but they did not vote in 2019. And I yeah. have a whole list of them for every single precinct. And at the end of the day, though I want and will willingly want our canvassers and our phone banking people to call them, what's more important is that I call them. And yeah. not only that, that my friends who live in precincts call them. Yes. And they say, I live in this precinct. And let me tell you what's happening. You're going to see folks knocking on your doors because it's going to be so important for us to get out the vote for the issues that we care about. And yeah, that's so the district this year. Nancy Rice from Wynn, Virginia. So Nancy, if you haven't met Fennell yet, this is she has been really just spot on on messaging. So connect with her. She may not even be on your radar yet, but I feel like... Um, uh, for now, you always sort of have this this way. Maybe it's your business she, background. Of bringing it up. Oh, good. Thank you. I don't mean yes or no, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we need to get her, uh, I, you know, just the voice of the party, as we say. And there's another special person I'd like to bring up on. Considerations, but we actually do look at all of the races. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, okay. and yes, I'm, I, I have taken notes because yeah. I always take notes. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Nance. Um, I like to bring up, uh, we have a special person here who knows exactly what we're talking about because Katie, this is your second time around, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. And your second time around is always good luck. So, so what are you thinking about today, my friend? How's things going? Tell us how you're shaping up your race. Well, um, you know, we have, um, and, and I'm gonna give a little, um, uh, shade to, to my counterparts and also flippable districts and say we have the most flippable district in, in the uh, Commonwealth right now. Uh, this uh, seat was won by Biden by about 12 points and it um, and, and our incumbent has stepped down and retired this year. So we have an open seat in addition to that. Um, and I, I think there is a great pickup opportunity and at least uh in at least six of our seats and i'll tell you back in 2017 when i ran this was not a flippable seat it was a 30 point republican district um i ran because i believe we should run everywhere i ran because i believe we can move the needle on issues when we have an incumbent that's been sitting for 22 years unchallenged 
um, and make him listen to his community at least somewhat. And that incumbent who um, had been a leading um, proponent against Medicaid expansion the next year voted to expand Medicaid. So I, I think we do move the needle and we do build benches and we build it up for 2019 when we were um, given a Supreme Court redraw uh, based on the fact that we were racially gerrymandered uh, here in Central Virginia so severely that we went from a 30 point Republican district to a 10 point Democratic district. Uh, so that, um, did, that is where Finale's um, strategy um, is, is a lot of our strategy. We have the Democrats. The fact yeah. is their votes have not mattered for so long. And so much has been done to disenfranchise those voters that they have no motivation to get out and vote, especially in these state level races. So we have to let them know what that motivation is. We have to make them believe that it matters. We have to make them believe that they're going to have a voice when they vote. Right. Um, and that I'm gonna carry that voice and their stories and those experiences to the legislator. And, and I think that's the most important reason I, I've had the, the um, uh, opportunity to uh, speak with Blakely personally. Uh, she's, she's here in my area uh, and I've gotten to see Nadarius and, and Fanal here. Um, and so I know that it's a motivating factor for a lot of us is that there's too many voices in our districts that aren't being heard. There's too many people who are not getting a seat at the table, um, not even getting their foot right. in the door. And, and so that's, that's what's on my mind today that's is making good. sure we do that yeah. and, and bringing it out, you, you know, guys like all, let me hear it. All inspiring. And we'll see some of you at the summit. I'm so excited to see you on the spit stage. So you're right. We want to make people feel like democracy works for everybody. And sometimes things never change for people. So they don't think their voice matters. So thank you for what you're doing and everybody stay in the room because we have a special guest here, a special organization, Melissa Hartman, or should I say Dr. Hartman from Razor is doing important work that we all need to hear about. I'd like to bring Melissa up for a few minutes to talk about Razor. Good luck. I'm going to come on your radio show later. Um, <laughs> Melissa, are you in the room? And please come up and talk about Razor and what you're all about. And you'll be at the summit too. And thank you for partnering with us. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. And Razor is excited to be a sponsor this year. We are a relatively new organization officially. We just formed in 2020. And Razor is resolutions addressing systemic and structural racism. So the members of our group have been addressing these issues for years, we're passionate about them. Uh, we have come together to, to form this organization. We are a 501c3 nonprofit, and our initial focus has been on mapping, uh, starting in the state of Virginia, but eventually nationwide, what are some of the actionable um, resolutions, uh, proclamations, statutes that are out there that number one, identify that systemic racism does indeed exist. And I had a very disturbing conversation with someone last night who still didn't understand that. And secondly, <laughs> that it is a problem in our society that we do need to address. So we have uh, our website, we're starting our map where we can link to, when you pick on the state, resolutions, proclamations that have been put out there so far. Like I said, starting in Virginia, where some of the initial right. enslaved people were, were brought. So we can talk about it more in the after chat if, if we need to. Yeah, time. sure. No, no. I, I mean, it's fine. I know we're getting up on the hour. And I know my team is saying mm -hmm. we always, you know, I always think, oh, we're not going to have enough time we always get up to time and then it's like yeah we're over over like three minutes but your work is really important and just in the room I think one thing about this election your thoughts on this this kind of trigger word that's been out there this critical race theory I've been getting into these Twitter conversations with people and I see the school boards being under attack this seems to be a tactic um, so the work you're doing with studying policy and laws across the state is that what we're talking about when we talk about critical race theory or is that, are people using it as a misnomer when they're talking about, we're talking about history and race, that's totally different, right? When you study Correct. in law it's, school, right? Yes, yes, it's, it's both. And I had that exact conversation last night with someone who equated critical race theory with just this whole general, and, you know, anti-racism type thing. So we have that and it becomes the messaging. So the things that Fanal was saying are extremely important. 
It's about what wording we use so that we can help people understand what it is and break down through those walls so they understand ultimately we're talking about the same thing, that's fairness, equity for everybody, removing the obstacles systemically um, that, right. that disenfranchise certain groups of people and do it in a way that's actionable at local, state, and eventually federal no. level. No, I, I love what you're doing. It's so important. And um, we want to continue from, I mean, we're talking historically, just generally about justice and George Floyd and all the different things that happened. Mm -hmm. We can't just sort of just kind of forget. And, um, and what I think that's happening when I see these debates about critical race theory, I've never heard of this thing before in my life. So to me, as a person that's an activist and an organizer and, and worried about winning elections, I look for the Republican strategy. They're out there making people in communities like in Fennell's community talk about this, go to the school board, and then they wanna go vote because they just get fearful and they don't have any idea what critical race theory is. They have any idea that a kindergartner doesn't have that on their agenda. So I think that in this room, we're gonna be continuing to talk about how we message and how we don't get into these debates. Talk, we're debating something again, they want us to debate. And it's not even, it's like the big lie in the election. You know, we start that we're always on the defense. We in Virginia have to get in front of this now. And I hope everybody listening from the Democratic up above, we're getting entrapped again in the Republican strategy. Instead of putting Democrats deliver and talk about everything we're delivering, we're and now we're in this battle and they're in the school board stuff. They're roused, they're getting people riled up to vote in Virginia. This is really a tactic and a plan. And that's what I want to say. So with that, Melissa, see you at the summit. I uh, mm -hmm. don't know if I'll see you at Rowan Tree tonight, but everybody in the room, it's that time again where I say we went over a little bit um, because I just felt like talking a little longer. Um, so thank you. Thank you to our patrons. They, I, we hope to see you at the Women's Summit. Make sure if you want to become a patron, subscribe for the cost of a cup of coffee. We hope you stay for the after chat and we hope you will check out networknova.org and look at our wonderful program we have for the whole summer of summits. And next week, uh, just so you know, some of the programming for the, for the Friday Power Lunch will center a little bit of an overlap with the summit, but we will also bring in some topics and cultural stuff and music and different things. So stay in action with us and let's wrap it up, Robin, unless I forgot anything. <laughs>